Okay, uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the eighth seminar on translation 2021. My name is Grace Ivan, and I will be your moderator for today's seminar. First, I would like to thank our lecturer, Mr. Harris, the presenters of today's seminar, Meliana and Akvendino, the judges of today's seminar, Yemima and Lily, and all of the participants for joining this seminar. Before we begin, let me give you a brief overview of today's seminar. In this seminar, we will have two sessions, each with one presenter presenting their paper for 20 minutes of presentation time and 10 minutes of question and answer time. In Q&A time, the judges will deliver their comments and questions first, then followed by the participants. To deliver your questions, you may use the raise hand feature or send it through the chat box. The presenters will answer right away after each question. And now without any further ado, I will welcome our first presenter, Meliana. I will read her profile first. Meliana is a student from the Department of English Letters, Universitas Sanata Derma. She is interested on translation since she was in the fourth semester. She has many experiences in translation scopes, as passionately working in a medical enterprise as a document translator. She is also trusted to be an editor of ELUP 2020 and an editor in theories and practices of translation class led by Ms. Almira. With these experiences, she intends to share her thoughts about the phenomena of translation errors precisely in genre translation as what she will present to us today. Her presentation entitled The English Translation of Batu Menangis Children's Storybook, A Study of Translation Errors. Meliana, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Grace. Now I will share my screen. So good afternoon, Mr. Harris and friends. Today's topic discussion will be translation errors in bilingual children's literature. Children's literature is a literary text that is targeted for children. There are various kinds of types. It can be in the form of prose, poem, folklore, fairy tales, and also fiction, and etc. And children's literature presents various kinds of fashion that always be renewed and developed. And the development of uh, children's literature undergoes the current times. For example, uh, we know that English becomes the most spoken language in the world. Uh, and definitely, by mastering English, children can, hear, can have a great opportunity and also advantages in their life later on. And because of that, uh, many uh, writers out there produce and arrange bilingual storybook for them, either from Basa into English or vice versa. So in this arrangement is in order to be a medium learning sources for children to and also to introduce them about English. And what to expect from bilingual children literature is that it's supposed to be easy to read text and the language should be simple and straightforward. And also, uh, usually uh, there are some basic illustration and also pictures in order to entertain and also uh, attract children's interest to understand uh, the meaning or and also to help them understand the story. But in the reality, we still found uh, some errors in the translation, uh, which uh, and then it comes mismatch with the source text. The errors may be in grammar errors that structurally, structurally happen in the word orders and also in spelling and in correction or lexical uh, choices of words. Here I provide you an example that is taken from Batu Menangis that I analyzed. Dia selalu menjawab dengan nada sinis bahwa itu adalah pembantunya. It is translated into she used to answer cynically that the women was her servant. Uh, for some people, maybe this translation, there is nothing wrong with this translation. But if we take a look uh, further, 
there is a translation error in the use of two infinitive. There is supposed to be uh, this form, this form after the word two because this is uh, the standard writing of English. Therefore, from my research, I expect that my research with theory, theoretical and practical benefits to the students, translation practitioners, scholars, and also postgraduates. The, the theoretical ben benefit is about understanding the definition of translation and also error analysis. Meanwhile, the practical benefit, uh, we can raise the awareness of English translation errors in children's literature, especially in building well story books. And the verbal formulation, of course, I want to know what errors are found in Rambis's English translation of Madhumanangis. And my objective, I want to discover and explain the errors found in Rambis's English translation of Madhumanangis. In conducting my research, I am using Kasafar's theory of error analysis. Kasafar states that error analysis is a procedure used by both researcher and teachers, which involves collecting samples of learner language, identifying errors, classifying the error, and then the final is evaluating the error based on their cause and also based on their mistakes. And I'm not only using the error analysis, I'm also using the classification of error by Kasafars. Here I focus on the on linguistic-based classification. There are four classification, but here in my research, research I only use uh, three classifications. The first is orthography error. Orthography error concerns with spelling. Of course, uh, writing cannot be separated from spelling. Even though we are uh, fluent in English, uh, we should uh, have the ability to writing. Because here for the example, I used to wake up early. There's supposed to be the word a, right, early. And then the second is for morphosyntactic syntactic errors. This error concerned with the grammatical structure in the sentence. For example, we need further information about this matter. Here in the word information, there's, a, so there's, supposed, there's not supposed to be of final additional S or ES in the word information because the standard word in English is supposed to be only information without any additional S or ES. And then the third one is lexical semantic error. It is focused more on the word meaning. So as a translator, we need to uh, be able to choose the right or the most uh, equivalent word to our translation. The example, the bank where my housing works was stolen last week. The word stolen is seemed uh, looks very good and doesn't make sense with what uh, the meaning. And then the the bank where my housing works was stolen last week supposed to be the bank where my housing works last week was robbed last week. So it is important to know the word meaning and also to choose the right word. And then the reason why I don't put phonological error is because my analysis only in uh, written text, literary text, there's not any, uh, there, so uh, it has nothing to do with sounds of speech because I only use the written text or the written form of this uh, And Then next. Kasavar's theory of error in translation. So Kasavar stated that errors are considered to be systematic, governed by rules, and appear because the learner's knowledge of the rules of the target language is in incomplete. They are likely to occur repeatedly and not recognized by the learner. So uh, working as a translator, we need to uh, understand the structure of our target language. So uh, we should not only master our uh, mother language because as a translator, error will always possible to happen. So whether it is recognized or not, we should recheck again. And then next one is the methodology. 
the research my the area of my research is gender translation and my object i am using an Indonesian folklore entitled Tatu Menangis by Frank Desi in version 2013. And the, the, the subject of my research is the English translation, which I focus more on the, on the target text, which is English. And my research is qualitative research, applying explicatory research method, uh, which means that there will not be any statistical uh, calculation, but more about paragraph and also in words. And how did I do my research is the first one, I determine the genre of translation and also I collect on the English sentences and the end is I analyze and identify the error. So here's one of literary related studies that I use. This is from Digital Repository, Universitas Negeri Medan. This undergraduate thesis by Nasution. This study discusses the types of translation methods in Indonesian folklore, Batu Menangis. It aims to analyze the types of translation methods used in Batu Menangis and to find out the most dominant method used in the English translation of Batu Menangis. Nasution expects that his research can enrich the reader's knowledge and also comprehension about the study of translation errors. Uh, sorry, about the study of translation methods. His research is mixed between qualitative and quantitative methods by using Newmark's theory of translation methods. From his uh, quick review, I found the similarities between uh, Nasution and my research is on the object of the study. We use the same uh, Indonesian folklore and dialogue to Menangis, and our research area is also the same in general translation. And the differences can be seen through the book version that we use. I am using the book version 2013, but also again using the book in version uh, 2015. And the focus of our, of our study is also different. Also again, focus more on the translation methods, while my research focus on the translation error in the English translation of Batu Manangis. The theories applied is also different. So I'm using New Marks theory, while in my research, I'm using Kasafar's theory. And the method of my study is also different. I am only uh, apply qualitative research method, but Nasution mix between qualitative and quantitative method. And from these similarities and differences, my research uh, stands for, I want to discover something new. I want to know more uh, about the translation error that happened in the process of translating Batu Menangis. Now we are moving to the analysis and discussion. So in the first data here, we focus in the word rice field, rice field. The source tag is stated as a uh, sawah dan ladang, and then it is translated into rice field. So uh, actually there is nothing wrong with this uh, translation, but if we take a look more on the um, spelling, the noun rice field is not the standard right in English because it should it should be written with a space. Uh, I know that it is quite difficult to use compound word because in compounding process, we need to decide what compound should be written since it is divided into open, closed, and hyphenated compound words. So as a translator, uh, they need to uh, recheck and take a look at the dictionary whether they use the right compound or not, because it is very uh, easy for translator to make a mistake and also uh, error in this case. And the next one is, misspelled grammatical form is it is still in spelling the first data number 10 the word embarrassed supposed to be double r and the second is key as a reader when i read the book i found it is confusing what the meaning or what uh what the writer mean to say by 
translating the word anaknya into he daughter. Of course, it is a, it is a typo. It's supposed to be her daughter's, her daughter's words. And then the third one, number 20, is the word servant. It's supposed to be servant, pembantu servant. There is a missing R in this word. I am aware that many English words consist of double consonants in one word. Because of that, it is vulnerable to make an unconscious error while writing. And then we said the next is the wrong use of tense. It is on the morphosyntactic error. So English has tenses to signify the time and also verb forms. And this is three data that I found use the wrong use of tense. It using it is using present tense instead of past tense. So in the first data number 22, tiba-tiba sang ibu berhenti lalu duduk di pinggir jalan. It, and it is translated into suddenly mother stop walking, then she sit down at the roadside. Here and um, the verb is not uh, what to say uh, uh, wrong because it's supposed to be in the past form. So it's supposed to be set, set down. And then second is the data 27, the word keep. The word keep is also uh, wrong because, however, mother keep on praying to God for punishment. It's supposed to be kept. The, first, uh, the past form of keep is kept. And then the third one is fell. It's supposed to be expressed uh, the feeling of the mother. It's supposed to be felt, the form of feel. And then next, for the rules of plural morphine, it is mixed yeah, between morphosynthetic and orthographic. The word thunders is a type of thunder. Then the rain fell down heavily with thunders. The word thunder seems or because thunders is an uncountable noun, which in this matter, contextual spelling includes as its basic form that does not need an additional suffix. And then for the morphosynthetic error analysis, I found the translation has the wrong use of prolamorphin. Yeah, here the word thunder. And next is wrong use of model and redundant use of preposition. It is considered as morphosynthetic. Here in the source text, Dermi hanya bisa menangis menyesali perbuatannya. And then the target text, Dermi only put crying, regretting for her ex. Of course, uh, this is a problem with um, the word order. The word order is uh, very uh, bad yeah, for me, actually. So in the words order in this translation is grammatically incorrect. The model verb is placed after the subject, then followed by the base form of the verb. And then for the conjunction only, only is indicates as the adverb of the tenses of the sorry of the sentence that should be put after the model verb. And then for the preposition uh, for sorry. It is unnecessary, even though it has the function to refer to something, but again, uh, as a translator, we need to make uh, our translation uh, not really detailed. I mean, we should not add any an, an unnecessary word. And then the translation should be, Dermy would only cry regretting her ex. And then for the problem of lexicosemantic, the word meaning, I found in the wrong lexical choices. The word everyday is an adjective which is commonly placed before a noun to form noun phrase. It should be written separately, separately into every day because to indicate a term of time. And the next one is the data number 34, the word panically, 
there is uh, some alternative expression to express uh, the panic that uh, experienced by the daughter. The translator should use hysterically or other alternative expression because panically is not doesn't exist in English. And then the next one is a uh, this is the combination of lexical semantic and morphosyntactic. The source text. Ya Tuhan, hamba mohon ampun kepadamu. Hamba sudah tidak sanggup lagi menghadapi sikap anak hamba yang duraka ini. It is translated into, Oh my Lord, I beg your forgiveness. Forgiveness. I can stand my face. I can stand facing my insubordinate daughter. Here, of course, um, the translator or NDC doesn't pay attention. Doesn't pay attention to the context of the source text. It is supposed to be, I cannot. I cannot stand facing my insubordinate daughter anymore. Therefore, it, it is considered as classical semantic. And for morphosynthetic, berikanlah hukuman yang setimpal kepadanya. Please punish her with a fair punishment she deserved to get. The translator has a wrong translation. Oh, uh, before the word deserve, there is supposed to be a uh, additional as, yeah, because this is indicates the third person singular, she. And then for the conclusion, here I conclude that parenthesis English translation of Batu Manangis is not satisfying because uh, the more synthetic errors become the most obscure for the grammatical errors from in found in the wrong use of tense, model, and the redundant use of plural morpheme and also preposition followed by an orthographic error in the wrong use of compound words and also misspelled grammatical form, and then for lexical semantic errors in the incorrect lexical choices. I predict that uh, Randisi doesn't really aware about uh, her in this translation because in which the error found accidentally appears due to the lack of knowledge in her target language. And the translation is not only about transfer, transferring meaning from source language into target language. There are several things that we need to concern. The first one is syntactical, semantic, lexical, and also contextual elements. And a translator should be competent, persistent, and also conscientious. And it's such, it's such as that uh, to those who are interested to do general translation, to read more books related to their topic of literary text, and also need to increase vocabulary, develop a writing habit for a better writing skills, and we should not uh, be overconfident with our translation. We need to recheck again so, so that there will not be any <clears throat> uh, spelling error. And we need to say that a translator should also replace themselves as a reader. Okay, I think that's all for my presentation. I will bring back the screen to the moderator. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Mariana, for the presentation. Now we will have 10 minutes for the question and answer, starting with the judges. The first judge, you may deliver your comments and questions. Okay, thank you, Lucas. Hi, May. Okay, uh, May, your outfit today is very polite. Uh, cool. It's cool. <laughs> and then your uh, when you deliver your presentation, uh, I can easily understand what you mean. Uh, but I think you must use your headset because uh, the sound when the sound in your place is too noisy. Uh, I cannot hear. I cannot hear clearly. Oh. I mean, uh, or you can move in to the place. Oh, there is no, uh, I cannot move because uh, this is my room. Oh. And if I move outside, there is uh, my dog. <laughs> I think oh. it's a bit. Uh, okay. Uh, or, or maybe you can use your headset, me. Oh, uh, I will try. Yes. Uh, and then in your, paper format 
uh, I see in your error analysis table, uh, it is, uh, I mean, you must separate them into one by one and you must analyze it one by one because I see in your paper uh, format in your table, it is, you don't separate it. You, uh, you make it into one. Uh, for example, number, your error analysis table number two, three, and six. Uh, maybe it, it will be, it would be uh, good if you analyze it one by one. Okay, okay. and then your, your paper format is fine as well, but uh, the table under wrong use of compound word is cut off me. Uh, sorry? Uh, just sorry? Your table mm -hmm. in under wrong use of compound word is cut off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just oh. one table is cut off. Okay. Uh, maybe you can revise it later. Uh, and then uh, for the header of your table, it is not consistent. Uh, I mean, in your in each table, uh, they are not consistent. Um, I mean, sometimes they are big and sometimes they are small. Maybe you can make it consistent, so it it will be it will it will be easy for the reader when read your paper. Okay, and then uh, I have two questions for you. The first question. Uh, why you mod why you interest in analyzing translation error in your paper? Uh, as we know, as we know, there are a lot of numerous uh, objects, for example, translation strat translation strategies, loss engine, and translation equivalence, and so on. Uh, why you you interest in translation error? Maybe you want to ask, uh, maybe you want to answer or? Oh, I, I will answer directly. So when uh, I interest in analyzing translation error in Batu Menangis, it is, it is because when I was in fourth semester with Ms. Almira, uh, Ms. Almira asked me to uh, analyze the translation error in children's literature and I choose Batu Menangis. And I found out it is interesting to analyze the translation error in Batu Menangis because I found several error in the English translation. Therefore, uh, it is interesting for me to, okay, I will use uh, this, uh, what to say, uh, this subject as my thesis. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you, May. Maybe it is easy to analyze me, uh, Batu Menangis, I mean. I think it is difficult to analyze because I should, uh, use the classification of other experts like the suffers. So I need to analyze the semantics, the semantic, uh, syntactical, and also um, grammatical. So it is not that easy actually. Okay. Uh, okay, May. Uh, May, why you choose Kasaper theory? Uh, why you don't choose, like in your review of related studies, like new marks the theory? Why okay. you choose oh. So I using a uh, theory because I think Kasapar theory suits me, uh, suits my research the most because there is a, a what to say, complete classification. Kasapar uh, uh, separate his um, analysis in uh, in linguistic. Uh, Kasapar include semantic and also grammar. Uh, Semantic, syntax, and grammar. So I think it is complete in Kasapar. And for new marks, I think new marks is the most used theory for several, uh, for uh, what to say, the very common, very common theory. Okay. So, and but Kasapar, it is still not really much like many writers using Kasapar. So I choose to use the suffers. Okay. Because okay, it's very rare. Yeah. Okay. Okay. For the last question, May, 
uh, in your data number 39, it is classified as wrong use model and redo than preposition use. It is because mm -hmm. just the con the conjunction only is the sentence adverb. So it is categorized as wrong use model and redo than preposition use. Or is there any brief reason? Oh, okay. So uh, in the data, uh, we can see the, the wrong word order, right? So after the model verb, they're supposed to be in the, the paste form. So put mm. only, right? So it is categorized as morphosynthetic. But uh, morphosynthetic in, uh, in the case, uh, wrong use of uh, model. And then for the redundant use of preposition, it is uh, different from the wrong use of model verb, but this data has two different has two different error so that I mix them. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it is still uh, but it is still a morphosynthetic error. Okay. But the types is different. Okay. Uh, oh, and I have a last question for you. Are you satisfied with your papers? Or mm. No, I don't satisfy Why? enough because uh, I know <laughs> what to say. Uh, the format of my paper is very bad. <laughs> I'm not good in uh, what to say. Uh, I'm not good to follow the format because I realized that I put the wrong page number. Oh, okay. The page, my, my page number is not uh, like what it should be. Right? So. When I do my paper, uh, um, I got some difficulties to make, uh, to get used with the format. So for me, it's kind of difficult to follow the format like that. Okay, I suggest you to ask your friend me if you have uh, any difficulty. Mm -hmm. Your friends will help you. Okay, okay. Uh, I think. It is my question. Thank you, me. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Yamima, for delivering your comments and questions. Now, the second judge, Lily, you may deliver your comments and questions. Yeah. Good evening, Melly. Good evening, Lily. Are you nervous? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Never. So, which one do you want me to say? The comments or the question? Uh, maybe the comments first. Uh, okay. So, uh, several comments have been mentioned by Yemima. So, I will mention the rest that I found. Uh, after I read your paper, I see that the indentation of the paragraphs is not consistent. Some paragraph is indented and some are not. And then uh, after Sir Harris teach us in previous meeting, he mentioned that we should write uh, metal methodology in our paper, we should add it. And then I see in your paper, there is no special section for methodology. So I think you should add it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I also find some typos in your writing. Like, uh, learning you write it leaning. yeah there is several typos and then uh, for the table uh, in some of the table you write no of data and then in other table you only write no so uh, what is it the writing is not the same I think you should uh, edit that and then what else? Uh, this is only suggestion from me. Uh, 
for the in writing the quotes of data in your paragraph in the discussion paragraph uh, i think you could write tt or st from line blah 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 instead of writing all of the data from the table and uh, it is to make it easier for the reader also okay and those are my suggestion uh, and then for the question uh, i want to ask your related study uh, the book in 2015 and the book in 2013 Is it the same title? Yes, the same title. Okay, and then you analyze the 2013. Yeah, yes. Uh, have you read the 2015 version? Uh, not yet. Yes, uh, I only have the uh, I only have the book version 2013. Uh, and then uh, if we pay attention to the publishing year. I think 2015 with the same title, it means maybe the writer have revised some errors. Do you think? Uh, oh, okay. Same. So, uh, for the writer in 2015 is different yes. with the writer in 2013. Oh, so um, different writer. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I think the same. Okay, and then uh, I also want to us in your introduction uh, you said that author can freely translate their storybook and then in the next sentence you say uh, the author finds some difficulties in translating their own writing so why it is uh, not the same idea So uh, the first is Batu Menangis is arranged and also translated by Rantisi. Therefore, Rantisi as the writer can freely translate uh, her work uh, because she had uh, her own perspective of the story. And then the second is why she found uh, difficulties because after I analyzed her error, her uh, translation, Uh, I predict that because there are some error in morphosyntactic in the grammatical structure, uh, I thought that Trandisi has a lack of knowledge of English. Therefore, uh, I have another idea. Uh, I put another sentence different. Uh, yeah. um, for to make it more clear for the reader that doesn't know the background of the writer, I think you can add more that explanation. In the first discussion of the first data, the discussion of wrong use of compound word, uh, The wrong writing of rice field belongs to what category of compound words? Open compound. Okay, it belongs to open compound. Yes. Uh, from the paragraph, uh, I think you didn't write that it belongs to the open compound. So uh, I think you should add more explanation by mentioning the category of compound words like rice field without space is closed compound words, and then rice field with space is open compound words. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, the last for the writing, for your writing, I check it in Grammarly with the five goals that had been suggested by Mr. Harris, uh, formal, knowledgeable, academic, described, and convinced. I have said it and you scored 66. That means you still need 
uh, to pay attention more to the writings also. I will send you the report after this okay. webinar. Yeah. Thank you, Lily. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, Lily, for delivering your comments and questions. Now for the participants, if you have any comments or questions, please use the raise hand feature and you can unmute your microphone or you can send it through the chat box. Okay, uh, Eugenia Sekar, you may unmute your microphone. Okay, hello May, how are you? Hello Sekar, I'm good. <laughs> Congratulations for delivering your presentation. Um, I have uh, two questions. So the first one is, do you think that these kind of errors also appear in adults or teenage books? Because um, I was thinking like maybe there's a slight prejudice for children's book like uh, cuma anak-anak aja nggak bakal ngerti lah salahnya di mana like that. So I want to ask, do you think that this kind of errors that you found also appears in adults or teenage book. And then the second question is, do you think that the role of appropriate is needed to reduce these kind of errors? Because you found that errors in typos and then like spaces, things like that. And is it does it need a role of appropriate or is it completely the translator's responsibility? Thank you. Thank you Sarah, for the question. So for the first question, uh, it depends on the translate on the translator because um, I think the result of in translation uh, in children and adults or uh, times a book is different, but it depends again uh, on the translator because uh, I think uh, for the translator for children book and adults book is different. And in this case, uh, I don't think that it has the same case. Like for example, uh, we know that children storybook has a many translation error, but it doesn't necessarily mean in adult book also has uh, the same case. Maybe in the translator of adult books is more professional or more um, knowledgeable. Uh, therefore, it's, it is not, I don't think so, that uh, the result of translation in children is the same in, as in adult. And for the second, the second question, uh, I think it's, it is important for translator to read more books because uh, in writing, well, we usually make some typos and maybe uh, we put the wrong order. By reading, we can uh, gain more uh, knowledge about how should we arrange a good sentence and how should we should uh, use a compound word like my case. So that's my answer. Do I make myself clear? Um, actually, for the second question, it's proofread. So uh, proofreader, the role of a proofreader, um, Sorry, uh, in the chat. So, do you think yeah. that uh, wait. do you think that the role of a proofreader is important to reduce the error, or is it only the that one. Okay, so I think it is the responsibility of the translator because as a reader, uh, we expect that the quality of the tra translation is good. But back again, uh, the quality of, of a translation should be depends on the translator, whether the translator is uh, a uh, professional or maybe still beginner, we as a reader, we should not uh, have our role as a proofreader. I think it's not really important. 
Okay. Okay then. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sakar, for your comments and questions. Uh, and now, is there any more question from the participants? You may use the raise hand feature and you can unmute your microphone or maybe you can send it through the chat box. Okay, uh, we have questions from Nadia. Nadia, you can unmute your microphone. Oh, hi, May. Hey, Nadia, yeah. Uh, you, you've done a great job in your uh, research paper. So I wanna ask, uh, in your opinion, uh, do you think that the English translation of the uh, story uh, storybook uh, understandable and acceptable for the actual target uh, actual target audience. That's it. That's just my question. Thank you. Okay. So because uh, because this book is targeted for children, uh, basically children will not really understand and need uh, somebody or need adult to uh, lead them, to accompany them to understand the story. And again, uh, I think for me, it is still understandable, but for children, I think it's still uh, not really understandable because it also, also depends on the children's comprehension and also their uh, range of age also. Um, if uh, the audience, uh, the children wants to learn English from that storybook, what do you think about that? Okay. I think it's good. It is good to use this storybook as the learning sources, but I think uh, still need adults to accompany them because children, uh, their comprehension will not uh, enough and they will not really understand. But again, it is good to use this book as a learning sources. Okay. Uh, so actually when I read uh, the, your analysis, uh, actually I think the mistake is uh, it can be avoided from the translator and the editor itself, if they really understand what they're doing. Okay, so uh, I have uh, contact the editor and also the publisher, and they said that uh, uh, it is maybe because Rantisi doesn't really pay attention to the result of her translation. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the publisher and also the editor doesn't uh, didn't uh, recheck again. They only accept the story and then publish it without any uh, editing or rechecking. Mm. Mm. So that's the problem. Mm. Yeah, I think it should be mm. a lesson so that yeah. publishers should pay attention to that. Mm. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, thank you, Nadia, for your comment and questions. And now, is there any more question from the participants? Please raise your, use the raise hand feature or you can send it through the chat box. Do you still have questions from the audience? Or you can send it through the chat box if the if your mic doesn't work. All right. I think there's no more question. 
And I will close the first session if there is no more questions. Thank you, Meliana, for your presentation and answers. And now we will move to the second session. I will welcome our second presenter, Adventino. Adventino Arta Canadian is a 22 years old, originally from Medi Madiun, East Java, and registered as an active student of English literature at Sanata Dharma Yogyakarta, batch 18. And his profile, he loves to cook, learning new things, new languages, and smiling a lot. Photography, videography, problem solving, leadership, and languages, especially Indonesian, English, and Japanese, are some skills that he mastered. In 2016 until 2017, he was a chief of the Madian Last Friday Ride community. In 2019 until 2020, he was a chief of English Letters Music Organization. And in 2019 until 2020, he was also an assistant, assistant chef in Pados Ex Maji Coffee and Kitchen. And now his presentation entitled Translation Style and Equivalence in Three Disney Songs Translated by Sogi Indra Duaja. And Aventino, the floor is yours. Thank you, Grace. All right. Okay. Okay, hello everyone, good evening. So here's me at Ventino with my research project. <clears throat> the translation style and equivalence in three Disney songs translated by Sogi Indra Dwaja. Okay, first, uh, so who doesn't listen to a song, right? Nowadays, everyone has ever listened to a song that usually used as a support value for some circumstances from the old, young, and even children all are enjoying listening to a song. So talking about song, uh, my object today is about Walt Disney Records that I'm going to examine who is more capable in translating. It is human or machine. Here, I explain the work of Sogi Indra Duraja as the official translator of Disney song in Indonesian language. I search how he translates its word and assemble it into a nice and accurate song. Okay, this is my uh, research object. This research is from Walt Disney Records. These three songs are included in one greatest Disney album entitled We Love Disney. The album, which was released on September 25, 2015, contains of 12 uh, iconic songs that have been used in Disney cinema masterpiece. And uh, Disney itself is synonymous with children's story theme shows, which have been selling well uh, from the past until now. And all ages still continue to enjoy the movie songs that are presented by Disney. And moreover, the followers from Disney is very wide, and it's already known that Disney has more than 25 million followers on YouTube and also on Spotify. Therefore, I choose this Disney project album as a study material to see how accurate and appropriate the translation of songs that translated by Sogi Indra Duaja. And the songs are, first is Do You Want to Build a Snowman, which translated into Yuk Buat Boneka Salju. Second song is when You Wish Upon a Star, which translated into Berharap Pada Bintang. <clears throat> and the last song is Can You Feel the Love Tonight, which translated into Dapatkah Kau Rasakan Cinta. <clears throat> and the goals, which including the problem formulation and also my research objective. The first is what translation strategies are the translator applied. So here I want to know how the translator did this translation of these three songs. <clears throat> what are the strategies are applied and how he do it. And the second is how is the quality of the translation in terms of equivalence to the style of the translation. Okay, so what I'm going to do to achieve that, um, this is the methodology that I applied. Firstly, I use a qualitative method 
as my basic methodology since the result of the study are expected in words rather than numbers. So uh, furthermore, I use a library research methods that became the main focus of helping me to find theories about translation, equivalence, and even the strategies to the style that the transl translator work. <clears throat> I also use an explanatory approach because it involves a careful, accurate, and focused study of a single major text or evidence surrounding a single complex event. So in this research, I will do a careful analysis of uh, structural and semantic stylistic features from the source text to the target text. The data analysis was arranged into three major parts in order to answer the problem formulation. The first step was analyzing the translation strategies applied in some lyrics of the source text to the target text. The second activity is comparing its line to its translation by examining the strategy of translation that applied. Then mention them by putting the strategies based on their kind. After all the data were analyzed, I can conclude that the style of the translation in its song is translated. The types of the data is taken from the source text from the originally original song from Disney, and the target text is the translated song into Indonesian version. And here I found about 90s data in this research, and it is the combination of the three songs. Okay, next the theory. I use two main theory here. First for the style, I use from Baker's theory, which the first is target text orientation which is the target texts are the focus of analysis and the corresponding source texts are not taken into account. Second is subconsciousness. The translator subconsciousness or strategies or characteristic use of language rather than purposeful response to the source text style. And the third is distinctiveness. A translator style can differentiate his or her way of translating from those of other translator. And for the strategies that I use is from Suryaminata and Haryanto, which divided into two uh, types. First is structural, second is semantic. Okay. First, the structural. <clears throat> there are three kind of uh, three types of uh, structural. The first is addition. This is the strategy used to add some words in other source texts because the source text needs some words to be accepted. And then subtraction. Subtraction is uh, omitting some structural elements in the target language. And the third is transposition. So here the translator changed the original structure of source language into the target language sentence to get the same meaning. Okay, next semantic. First is borrowing. This is a translation strategy that the translator used as a word or expression from source text into the target text. The reason of using this strategy is to show the respect through the words. Another reason is uh, there is uh, no equivalence in the target language. And then second is cultural equivalent. In this strategy, <coughs> the translator used the cultural word from the source text to change the cultural word of the target text. And then descriptive equivalent and compon componential analysis. This strategy used uh, because the source text related with the cultural of the source text. Uh, it expressed through description and function. The strategy is placed in the glossary mostly. And the fourth is synonym. This is strategy that used when the translator used the more or less the same meaning for the source language. Fifth is official translation. So uh, this strategy is usually applied in a formal translation. And therefore, uh, the translation 
translate a text from another language by using a manual book like uh, KBBI. And then six, the six is redu reduction and expansion. Uh, reduction means uh, reducing some source component and the expansion is the opposite of reduction, which adding some word component. Seven is addition. In this strategy, the translator gives more uh, information for the target language reader. So uh, it may con come in the text or <coughs> bottom of the text or of the end of the text. It is omission means deleting a word from source language in the target language. So it, it is strategy used when the word's meaning is not important for the development of the text. And the last is modulation. This is a strategy to translate uh, phrases, even clauses or sentences to get the exact meaning from subtext to the target text. Now, finding and discussion. Here, I'm uh, going to explain my finding and discussion uh, according to its songs. So the first song is, do you want to build a snowman? Here I found uh, 21 structural translation and 15 semantic translation. The structural trans translation is divided into the subtraction, there is 10, and then transposition, there is nine, also addition, there is two. And the semantic translation, they, it has uh, four in synonym, six in modulation, and then three in omission, one in expansion, and one in addition. So I can conclude that from this song, the structural and versus the semantic translator strategy is 16% uh, and 40%. And from the, from the, uh, from the, <coughs> From that, I can conclude that style is subconsciousness because of uh, it used much in structural translation. Second song is When You Wish Upon a Star. <clears throat> so there is only six structural translation and eight semantic translation. It is uh, four in subtraction and two in transposition. Also, there is for in synonym and for in modulation. Be because this song is much more used in semantic strategies, so I can say that this song is target text oriented. <clears throat> the third song is Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Is, uh, the, the total data is 10 structural translation, which divide into for subtraction, for transposition, and to addition. And also there is seven semantic translation. There are four in synonym, two in modulation, and one in cultural equivalent. And also for this song, uh, I can say that because this song is much more in structural rather than semantic, so the style is subconsciousness okay now the discussion and this is the most uh, strategies that applied from song and here is the subtraction this is a structural strategies which uh, reduce some word like the first from do you want to build a snowman it says in the source text is that come out the door and for the target text says only keluarlah, which means uh, the translator choose to delete it, the word door rather than uh, translate it into the target text too. It's uh, happened to the other source too. And then transposition. Second structural that mostly applied. 
In the do you want to build a snowman? Star Trek say, come on, let's go and play. And the target text say, mainlah denganku. Here, uh, the translator just to change, uh, come on, let's go and play to denganku. So it can be more, uh, get the exact meaning from the source text to the target text. The next strategies is addition. So here, uh, only from two songs that use addition, do you want to build a snowman? And also, can you feel the love tonight? This is the example of it. And from this song is what are we gonna do? That since itu harus bagaimana? The, the addition in here is said by the target text that uh, change the meaning from the source text. What are we gonna do is if literal say that apa yang harus kita lakukan, then the translation just to harus bagaimana. The word bagaimana is not mentioned in the source text. <clears throat> okay, the next is synonym. Synonym is finding the same exact meaning or maybe less exact meaning from the source text to the target text. Here from do you want to build a snowman? Uh, from the source text, just watching the hours tick by. And the target text say, hanya menghitung waktu. Here I can found that watching in here change into menghitung. Therefore, I think the translator might think that watching is close enough to menghitung. The next is modulation. <clears throat> this kind of strategy is uh, changing the, the, the whole phrase or clause to have uh, the same meaning. So it's like if gone away from the source text of do you want to build a snowman that, that translated into berhenti menghilang. Uh, I can say that it's like you've gone away, it's missing, but there is no words as berhenti. So the translator choose to translate this whole phrases into berhenti menghilang so he can, uh, he can get the same, uh, same meaning from source text to the target text. Okay, there is three that only use one in each song. So do you want to build a snowman has omission, which uh, reducing some word to the target trans translation. <clears throat> From the source text, it says, I wish you will tell me why. And the target text, it's less than mengapa. So in here, uh, the source text from I wish you would is missing and the translator just straight into saying jelaskan mengapa. It's, it's changing also the, the uh, structure of the word. Next is addition. And in here, uh, also in song, do you want to be a snowman? Source text say that I'm right out here for you. Just let me in. In the target text, it says, biarkan ku masuk memelukmu. So there is no word hug or cuddle or something that similar to memelukmu, but the translator just to say that biarkan ku masuk memelukmu, just to get the same meaning from source text to the target text. And last is cultural equivalent. In love, in, in the song, can you feel the love tonight? Here we can see that when the heat of a rolling wind and, and translated into ketika langit menjinja redakan dunia. Why I just this, uh, this sentence that use the strategy of cultural equivalent? Because uh, I think that from the source text, 
when the heat of a rolling wind is some is some parable parable sentence so it's it's not the real meaning that one want to want to uh, show so the so the target text just to say uh, the the is like other word that may be is closely enough to the short text. Okay, <clears throat> so the conclusion from my research objects. My research is talking about the three Disney songs. The first one is Do You Want to Build a Snowman? Second is When You Wish Upon a Star? And third is Can You Feel the Love Tonight? The total data that I got is 37 data on structural and 30 data on semantic. And the style that mostly used from these three songs is subconsciousness. So the various strategies are applied proofs that what matter most is the word choice of the translation, putting the target text naturalness over the meaning. The existence of translation style in the song in the song strengthened the idea of the importance of word choice in song translation, since songs related to the music, rhyme, tempo, and etc. Song lyrics is different from other text types other text types and most important thing it is entertaining expressive and informative okay thank you everyone for listening my presentation all right uh, thank you adventino for the presentation now we will have 10 minutes for the question and answer starting with the judges the first judge you may deliver your comments and questions Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Gurias. Hi, Nino. Hi, Yami. <laughs> okay, your outfit today is very polite, like Melly. Cool, <laughs> cool. Okay, thank and you. then your PowerPoint is very interesting. And the way you deliver, it is easy to understand. Uh, but uh, I have a comment for your format paper. Uh, I noticed that there is a lot of white space between keywords and introduction. Nah, I want to ask why there are a far space between keywords and introduction in your paper. Uh, so uh, when I wrote the paper, I think I am a little, a little bit confused, which, uh, which is the main focus of my paper. So when I read the introduction into the conclusion, I think there is a missing part and missing link that still I'm, I cannot uh, explain in the paper. Oh, uh, no, uh, I mean the format of your paper. Uh, the format? Yes. Uh, as we know, the format from keywords and introduction, there is no spacing, uh, but in your Pepper, it is uh, a far test. Oh, okay. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, honestly, uh, I don't know how to erase the space that is so much. There is the first and second is, uh, I'm working on that paper is uh, too close to the deadline. So oh. I think I, I, I don't manage the time to Revise that thing. Sorry. Thank you. Thank okay, you for this. Okay. Please make it carefully next time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you know, do you recall from seminar paper anatomy, anatomy that a seminar paper only has one topic discussion? Uh, but why do you have two, two topic discussion in your paper? Translation style and equivalence. Okay, so why there is there are two? Uh, it is because uh, the what I want to what I want to uh, examine is the style of the translator, which is Soki Indra right? And why I put equivalence in there is because equivalence have helped me to uh, find how is the style of the translator. So the equivalence, I think I need to put it in my paper also because the tools to 
uh, the tools that help me to find the translator style is from the equivalence strategies like that. Oh, so you cannot just focus on one topic discussion. Okay, okay. Uh, okay Nino, uh, your title is translation style and equivalence in three Disney songs translated by Sogi Indra Duwaja. Uh, but when I read your paper, you discuss translation strategies rather than translation style and equivalence. Oh, why like that? <laughs> uh, uh, it is because uh, this, this three, uh, this three, what is it? This three, this, this three words that strategies and then uh, equivalence and style is related one oh. to each other. Okay. So why I use, uh, there is there is the strategies and then the equivalence. That's because uh, if I want to find the style, then I need to find the equivalence which uh, from the strategies they are applied. Um, uh, why you don't change the title? Uh, like the strategies in... I just don't get the idea at first, maybe. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Uh, and then for your analysis table, it is not consistent, you know? Uh, I mean, sometimes it is bigger, sometimes it is too small. Uh, I suggest you to make it consistent for the next time. So it is, it is more easy, easier to read and more good. Thank you, Amy. Uh, okay, for the last comment, uh, I already said the Grammarly, uh, which is explained by Mr. Harris. Uh, and your overall Grammarly score is 75, 75. And I found 3% plagiarism in your introduction. Uh, I found the plagiarism from translation journal net October to, uh, 2017 issue. Is it right you, you get or... You get uh, from the translation journal or you make it by yourself? Uh, how can I say? I mean, uh, maybe if is if this application say like that, maybe I need to do uh uh what is it? I I need to, to check it first too because I cannot remember everything that oh. I wrote and also where I, I get it and things like okay. that. Okay, okay. Maybe next time you check it later. Yes, okay. Maybe next time you can paraphrase it and check it on Grammarly. Okay, thank you. Okay, and I have a question for you. Uh, for the first question, because your abstract is has, uh, because your abstract has too many purpose and does not focus on one. Uh, I would like to know what purpose you want to achieve with your paper. The main focus is finding this translator style. So I think uh, why in the abstract I say uh, strategies, method, even the equivalence is because there is the tools that help me to achieve my purpose in finding what style is the translator applied. Okay, I see. Uh, and then I have uh, another question for you. Uh, for the data number 41, why it is labeled as free translation? Sorry, labeled as? Free translation. Free, free translation. Yes, in your data number 41. Yeah, uh, I, 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 uh, I wrote it, I, I read it too, and I've, I've, I found that the, there is my purely mistake that uh, I'm not careful enough in saying what is this kind of uh, uh, strategies and style and everything. That's yeah. I, I found it that there is my pure mistake mistakes. Yeah, Mima. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, you know, uh, and I have another question again. <laughs> uh, why you why you use uh, Surya Winata and Harianto theory? Uh, why you don't choose? Why you don't apply it like another theory, like from Newmar? Eh, uh, sorry, uh, I mean the other theory. 
ya because I think uh, my source text is from English and the target text is is to Indonesian and the translator is purely uh, Indonesian person so I think the the quite fit in theory is from Surya Winata because it's it's form of Indonesian language. Oh, and it is more suitable with your yes. effort. Okay. Uh, okay, for the last question, you said in your introduction that the purpose of your paper is to reveal the, the accuracy and acceptability of a song that has been translated into the target language. But uh, I don't see that in your discussion. So I want to ask how accurate and acceptable is a song that has been translated? So about the accurate, uh, I'm not, uh, in my paper, I'm not uh, talking about it uh, too specific. It's, it is just to uh, uh, help me to found the purpose, the, the main purpose, which is style, and why I why I say that there is accuracy and accept, acceptance is just for uh, what is it? Uh, okay, uh, I think uh, for for me it is to help me to think more wider. That is oh. this transition from the human is is it acceptance or something like that? Oh. But I'm not. Specific, specifically uh, talking about that. Okay. Okay, you know, um, I suggest you to prepare it. Yeah. Uh, to prepare it. Uh, I mean, uh, don't, don't write your paper uh, near the deadline. Please be more carefully for the next time, okay? Okay, you. you know, uh, I think that's all uh from me thank you thank you all right thank you Yemima for your comments and questions and now uh the second judge Lily you may deliver your comments and questions yes uh, hello at Pentino. hi Lily yeah um actually I want to ask some questions but Several of them have been asked by Yemima, so I will ask another question that still not being asked. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, first, you use the what is it? The theory from Surya Winata and Haryanto, and then it is from two thousand and three. Mm, after I search in the uh, in Google, I found that uh, Surya Winata and Haryanto have the revised version, and it is published in 2016. So, uh, for this research, why you use the 2003? Okay, so. Uh, I think firstly it is because uh, the book that I found is the version of 2003 and when I read it, it is fits perfectly to the object of my study and also my research and that's, that is why that I still uh, have the confidence to use this version that, to apply in my paper. Have you read the 2016 version? Uh, not yet. <laughs> okay. Um, if you read the 2016 version, actually they have changed some theories in the translation strategy chapter. Uh, and they have add three types of translation strategies. Uh, and then in your paper, you only write two types. So I think uh, you should be more updated. Or, I don't know, is it okay to use the old version instead of the updated version? Uh, 
Uh, I don't have any idea too, but maybe I I'm gonna consider it later after this. Yes. Uh, and then. Uh, uh, so in your discussion, uh, you write the title of the discussion is the discussion of strategies. Yeah. Um, but after I read, I find that you also discuss about style. So it is mixed in one discussion. Um, is it the same style and strategies or different? Uh, different because the strategies is help me to show uh, what style are the translator applied. And I can say it's different also is because uh, the strategies is more detail in in what is it in examining the words. So if it is different, do you think you should uh, combine it in one discussion or you should separate it? Uh, in my discussion is so uh, the strategies and the style is related ones to to the other because once I got what is the strategies that are applied, I can say that what is the style that also the trans the translator uh, use. Uh, 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 if you only write strategies, I think the reader would catch that you only discuss about the strategies. So in the opening or maybe in the title, in the discussion, you can be more specific and uh, write the about this style also. And uh, in the last discussion, the data, the last discussion of the data, number 46, uh, you mentioned that it is belong to a structural strategy. So in your paper, structural strategy have three types. So which one? Sorry? Structural uh, strategy? Uh, um, do you see the data in your paper? Number 46. It's enough for this white eyed wanderer. Mm -hmm. You say that it belongs to a structural strategy. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, yes. Structural strategy have three types. So which one? Wait a minute. Oh, this is the transposition for this white eye wonder. So it's different. By 46, for, oh, I'm sorry, this is 43, so. Oh, oh 46. so it belongs to transposition from structural strategy. For for this, it's enough for this white-eyed wanderer. Telah cukup hatiku berkelana. It's be, it is it is the subtraction. I mean, because this yes, because this is uh omitting some word, some word. The white-eyed is not used in the target text. Oh yeah. Okay, you you can add uh, in that discussion part. It belongs to which type because it's not clear yet. And then, uh, 
I, I see in your references, you didn't write the main source, which is the theory of Surya Winata and Haryanto. In your references, you didn't write that source. Yes. 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 I see that. I didn't write it. Sorry. And then what else? In the abstract, I think uh, you can add the result of your analysis at the end of the paragraph. Yes. Okay. And then in the discussion of data number nine, it doesn't have to be a snowman with the, with the target text atau mau main yang lain. Uh, according to the recent revision book version, modulation belongs to structural strategy. So I think you can revise that part and then uh, in your writing you use some writing use quotation and then some use italic so do you think it is correct to use both of them yes i think it's to differ what i'm what i uh, in italic i i think it is in the another language and also in uh, slang word, I think. Mm. No, in write, in the writing, you should okay, choose okay. only I see, one. I see. I see the problem. You want yes. to use italic or you want to use quotation. Uh, what else? Have I asked this question about parable phrase? Not yet. Oh yeah. Uh, so I see in your discussion in the data number 28 and uh, maybe in another discussion also, I forget. Uh, you mentioned that the, uh, the data shows the translation of parable phrase from ST. Uh, is parable phrase a translation strategy? Uh, according to my the, the theory I use, it is not included into the uh, strategies. But here I say that why it is a parable sentence. It is it is just to make it clear uh, uh, why there is a there is this short text that translated into this word and uh, and. and and just to uh, clarify that it is this kind that not what is it uh um not not helping me in in find uh, in find the style that translator applied. Uh, uh, so uh, what is the strategy of that data? The data number twenty eight. Uh, the data is not included into any of the strategy that I use. Oh. It is just make to clarify that there is this sentence that uh, cannot be examined with my theory like that. Mm. Uh. If that's so, uh, I think you can add that explanation in your paper. So for those people who don't really understand or only have little knowledge regarding with translation strategies will get your idea. And then... Or can I, can I ask you, uh, may I just delete it or... Just add some. <laughs> <It's been three. laughs> 
Uh, Which one is better? Uh, because you have proposed on discussing that part and it is related with your topic. So yeah, you may let it remain there, but you add more explanation because uh, some people might not understand what is translation strategies and happen to read your paper, they might don't get your idea. And then uh, for uh, like what Yemima have mentioned before for the Grammarly, uh, I actually have a different score. It is 78. I don't know if why it is different, but later on I will uh, send you the report. Okay. okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. <laughs> all right, thank you, Lily, for your comments and questions. And now it's time for the participants. If you have any comments or questions, you can use the raise hand feature or you can send your question through the chat box. We are still waiting for any comments or questions for Adventino. Okay, Nadia again. Okay, you can unmute your micro microphone, please. Okay, so hi, Adventino. Hello. Uh, you've done good job on your research paper. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, well. I actually, I'm going to ask two questions. Um, so the first one, I just want to confirm, uh, since you uh, discuss about uh, translation of Disney songs, uh, are this Indonesian version of these songs are first uh, translated only, like for example, in lyric video that you usually find in YouTube, Second, uh, so so Gindra is the uh, official translator from uh, Disney, and the uh, the trans the translation is the translation are sung by other singers, and then uh, they are officially released by Disney. Or the third one uh, uh, is Sogi Indra uh, trans translated by him. I mean, translate it and then sing it and then upload it in YouTube. Like, uh, you know, yeah, like cover singers like that. Okay. So as the news that I got is, uh, Songi is, Songi is just to translate it, these three songs and sing it by uh, three different artists. And it is also, uh, Upload it into the Disney Disney Asia FIFO in YouTube is if I'm not mistaken, and also it's already uh, published in RCTI mm. some while time ago, and and the album itself is uh, already released from Walt Disney Records on 25 sep uh, 25 September 2015. Oh, okay. So it is a legal uh, album from Disney itself. Ah, I see, I see. Uh, maybe you can uh, put it in your uh, introduction because, yeah, it's to elaborate more on your object. Okay. And then, Thank the, you. Oh, yeah. uh, and then the second question, because uh, actually the judges ask a lot. Uh, actually, it's similar, almost similar to uh, Yemi's question. So uh, I find that uh, you put your title style and equivalence, but 
the analysis uh, the analysis say it's strategy suddenly it's strategies because I also find style in the what is it like theories and then uh, I don't know is it this is this your objective because I find I find it in the last paragraph of your introduction because refill and uh, refill the method and also the accuracy and acceptability uh, can you uh, elaborate those uh, confusing thing yes you put the red thread on <laughs> so as i mentioned before uh, uh, the the main purpose is is a uh, the main purpose is style is finding what style that the translator mm. applied but uh, how do i can achieve that is be is by uh, finding the equivalence of the translations which i need some strategies how to how to know uh, how to elaborate the equivalence of of the translation so the accuracy and the accessibility is just for me to um, make sure for the for me and for the reader that these strategies that related to the equivalence translation which will reveal the style of the translator can be more uh, accept, uh, acceptable and su suitable like that Uh, I think you may simplify it. I mean, maybe you can revise the title. I think maybe strategies because because yeah. <laughs> I find I find it surprising actually. <laughs> Certainly, you talk about strategies, uh, and also uh, the it, it's your objective, right? The method and accuracy acceptability. Right. Uh, uh, the objective is in finding yeah. the strategies, equivalence, uh, and the style. Actually, uh, uh, maybe you can uh, omit that. Uh, yeah. What is it? Method and uh, such, because you don't talk about that actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So, so that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Nadia. And now, is there any more question from the participants? Okay, Nanda, you can unmute your microphone. Hello, Nino. Hola, Nanda. Hola. Uh, actually, it's really interesting. It's, re it's, a, it's, a, it's a really, in it's, it's a really interesting uh, question because uh, you know I think uh, we both have uh, the same objects. You know. We both our songs is just a uh, different in language, I guess. But yeah, it's a it's a really interesting uh presentation. Uh well, let's jump into the question that. Uh, but before that, uh, I think uh, I'm going to focus on the, you know, the translation or particularly the nuance of the the, the translation. Well, first of all, I think uh, we know that Disney. I think this is just in my opinion. We know that Disney is generally uh, targeting kids. I'm not sure. I, I'm I'm just like the generally because people uh, kids usually watch Disney because Disney is like cartoon and stuff like that. So I think, in my opinion, is that they they are target uh, the kids. And when it comes to kids, sorry, I'm missing your voice, Nanda. Not okay. I'm sorry. Uh, when it comes to Disney, okay, uh, the language is simple because it is for kids. It is not that complicated, like like that. And uh, and when I uh, how do I say uh, observe your presentation or especially your paper, the target text is uh, a bit too uh, expressive. And we know that song is like expressive. I I don't argue that. I don't argue that. Well, I think it's a bit expressive for the kids to uh, to understand that because kids they are generally listening and understanding uh, to songs that okay maybe it's like 
oh, so it's, it, it means like this is my, they, they don't go too far from that, okay? So do you think, in your opinion, if, if you were the translator, okay, would you separate the, the translation or would you make it natural or would you just mix it as in your presentation or in, in, your, analyze, uh, in your analysis? Because I think if, if we separate the translation, for example, uh, kids can understand it and then uh, young adults like us, they can understand it too because they're, uh, of course we can understand that because you're, you're an adult. Uh, it's just to make the kids understand that more uh, better. Uh, if we make that uh, the, the, the separation and the natural because, you know, because this one is a kid, it's a kid song. I think that the naturality, the, the, the natural translation would make it uh, like better. And if you stay as is, the mixed translation, uh, I don't know. What do you think about that? that, that do you th uh, would you choose to separate that or would you translate it as, uh, as a natural translation or would you mix them up? Okay. <clears throat> so in my opinion, that as long as we know that all of this Disney song is not only made for a uh, made in a song. I mean that this song is included into the the movie too, right? So in the cinema, they use this song inside, like inside inside of it. Like, do you want to build a snowman? Is inside the movie Frozen like that? So it's kind of like of a high school musical like that things, and uh, I can say that. If I the translator, I prefer to translate it into uh, the 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 short text uh, meaning. I mean, uh, just just do it uh, naturally because <clears throat> because uh, from the short text, if we talk about a song, it's it means like we uh, translated a poem also, right? So the meaning from the meaning of the song lyric is not only sentence to sentence, but the whole lyrics is mean something. Therefore, if I the translator, I just to uh, translate it uh, into the same word is the short sex want to say to the uh, audience like that Nanda. okay thank you i thought I, actually i'm just curious you know because i'm wondering like oh uh, well the the translation is like uh, it's too expressive uh, i mean i, I can't I, I i can understand if, if, I, if I were uh, the, the the kid yeah i think it's a uh, it's a really good if we if we change it the natural i think we have the same yeah, the, the same point, I guess. <laughs> well, th thank you, Dino, for that. It's just uh, an opinion question, by the way. Yeah, thank you, Nanda, for asking. All right, thank you, Nanda, for your questions. And now, is there any more question from the audience? You can raise your hand, use the raise hand feature, or you can send your question to the chat box. All right, I think there's no more questions and now I will close the second session. Thank you Advendino for your presentation and answers. And ladies and gentlemen, now we have come to almost the end of the seminar. A quick reminder for the judges and the peers, do not forget to fill out and submit the assessment form on Belajar USD. And I would like to thank again our lecturer, Mr. Haris, the presenters, Meliana at Anfetino, the judges, Yemima and Lily, and all the participants for joining the seminar. Hopefully, the presentations will be beneficial for everybody. And now we will hear a few words from Mr. Haris. Mr. Haris, the floor is yours.